Previously, on Go4, Matias nailed his speech at TEDx Berkeley that he hopes will kick off a whole new direction for his career. It's really cool because it feels like my craft is perceived in a positive way. Lizzie has been hustling to sell out her opening weekend. You're trying to convince 32 people that what you've created is worth spending nearly $600 to come to. And hit the road to climb the moonlight buttress. And Jesse decided to pull the plug on the Mount Taylor Quadrathlon. Every few minutes it just is like a really sharp pain. And is rethinking what being pro means. I like to challenge myself in basically everything that I do. Moonlight Buttress is graded at 12 plus and has six pitches of 512. So it's my favorite style of climbing at the most difficult level that I've ever done it in one of the most beautiful landscapes you've ever seen. So of course I want to try it. I feel mentally prepared to push today. And if I can pull out the best climber in me, there's a chance that I could do it. It's hugely important to visualize your success. If you approach a challenge, whether it be something physical or something business oriented or even mental, if you have any doubts about it, that's what's going to happen. My advice is that you block out all the what ifs and that you focus on the how to. After nearly four hours on the wall, climbing the warm-up pitches of the route, Lizzie makes her way to the base of the corners. The corners are the two hardest pitches of climbing on the moonlight buttress, and will push Lizzie to the limit of her skill level. Oh, fuck me. Ah! Ah! Today's moving day. It's gonna be nuts. We'll see how it goes. Hopefully we get through it all. About two or three months ago, we found out that our warehouse, which is where we were storing about 80% of our product in, was being sold. We were super lucky to find a building just four or five blocks from where we are now. We've got office on this side, warehouse over here. It's like super rad that we found a place that had a real office connected to a real warehouse. Moving offices has actually provided this super tangible, transitionary feel from kind of what Picky Bars was in our old office in this little space to this big warehouse, more legitimate office space. I have my own office for the first time <laughs> at Picky Bars, which also makes it feel more professional. We think the warehouse is big enough to get us to seven to eight million dollars a year of business, which is a more than double where we are right now. It's kind of a nice transition, like this is where the next phase of Picky Bar starts. There you go, empty. Now I'm a little bit nostalgic. There's a lot of memories in this place, but also a lot of new fun memories to be made. Good job, Jared. <laughs> it's 4 a.m. and Matthias is heading out on a ski-based training mission in preparation for his upcoming projects in France. What's really tricky as an athlete is uh, managing your time. It feels like there's not many hours in the day. Between prepping for speaking engagements, you know, sponsors, dealing with contracts, organizing the logistics for your trip, and then also performing, you have to find the time to train. That's the, the main reason why I want to ski base jump now, so I don't go to the house and be like, hey, how do I do that again? <laughs> <laughs> Well, there'll be times when you feel scattered and you got way too much going on, and those are the times when you have to prioritize. It's like I make sure that I have at least a few days a week to skate two or three hours because that's what I enjoy the most and that's what keeps me sane. Before you go out on a mission, you check in the weather every hour to see how the weather forecast is evolving. It's not just looking at the conditions and being like, oh, let's go, it looks good. It's not a perfect science. And by the time you show up, you know, Things might line up, but things might not. Ideal conditions for a ski base jump, there's absolutely no wind. All right, no go, too much wind. There's always a 50% chance of getting it done and a 50% chance of turning around. You can't just think of doing it no matter what, because this is how you get hurt or die. And uh, 
in the end, the mountains decide. You're not the one in charge. That's what makes it beautiful because when you're a mountain athlete, you cannot take things for granted. The first corner pitch is Lizzie's first 512 pitch of the day, the most difficult climbing on the route so far. And this is where the exposure of the climb starts to play a big factor as she's now over 400 feet off the valley floor. Nice work. Oh, fuck me. Ah! Ah! Just remember, your mantra is, you are fucking strong. <laughs> Steven off the lead! <sighs> the second corner pitch is rated 512 plus and is the crux of the moonlight buttress, meaning it is the most difficult pitch on the entire climb. Dude, so fucking hard. You could take. This is a long, narrow section of crack that requires incredible endurance. Wow. <sighs> Fuck me. I just stopped having fun. I think I've just like pushed through a lot today. And I think I'm worn out at like sucking. And I just don't have it in me to keep sucking right now. After struggling on the pitch for over an hour, Lizzie decides to call it quits. I don't know this technique super well and it like completely shut me down. It doesn't feel impossible, but it's something that I'm gonna need to put work into. The cost of doing something new is multiple failures. For the next five days, the forecast is predicting rain. Today is not how I want to end my time on the route, that's for sure. Rain on sandstone is a really bad idea. One, it damages the rock and it makes it softer. So if I do take a fall, then I can rip gear out of the wall, damaging the rock and potentially hurting myself pretty bad. With rain in the forecast, Lizzie will have to make the choice if it's worth the risk to continue climbing. I'm super psyched today we've got our first visit with Village Family Capital. So investors are gonna come over. I'm gonna show them the place. Hey. Hey, hey what's up, man? How are Welcome you? Welcome to Picky Bars HQ. Yeah, glad to be here. Yes. Looks great. This is it. They are kicking the tires is the term that everybody uses, making sure that we are what we say we are. Maybe if you could walk us through kind of the process, what, where it comes, how it goes, where it flows, where, yeah. where it goes out. Yeah, kinda. totally. I've found that I'm looking for one to two million dollars. Somebody that's comfortable with us paying down some of our debt on the investment, which is really important. And then somebody that's looking for more moderate growth goals in that they're not expecting us to 10 or 20 X their money over the next like four to five years at the risk of bankrupting ourselves. And what about the, the quality check in terms of, did they get the right bars in the right box? I mean. Do you guys have much of? Yeah, we have very low error rate. And so how does this rank? Like, are we at the front end of a shipment? Are we, like, where, where are you? We're stocked right now. Stocked. Pretty heavy. Yeah, vetting investors is painstaking. It's, it takes a lot of time. And you're just getting to know these people. You're potentially maybe asking them for a lot of money. It's like dating. <laughs> so you gave away 13,000 then? We, we, no, we didn't give away anything. Uh, we sold 757 uh, sold, bundles. Okay. 78 of those people have become picky club members. You're partnering up with someone on a business. It's important to, to build a relationship with them, a personal relationship, because you want to make sure you're on the same wavelength and you have the same value system. And it's not just about making money, because if that's what it's about, you're going to clash <laughs> along the way. Um, cool. Well. Thanks for coming, guys. Let's head out and go grab a beer. Sounds good, yeah. right? Yeah, sweet. It's great. Back in Zion, the rain has stopped, the sun is out, and Lizzie is going to give the Moonlight Buttress another shot. So here we are on top of Moonlight Buttress, and Katie came. She was a few hours away and decided to come down to provide some comic relief with me and Steven. Moral support. <laughs> There's no point 
in my mind of attempting the route again from the ground up unless I can climb the crux clean. So the goal is to be able to What Lizzie was trying to say is, today she will be climbing the upper pitches, the highest and most exposed pitches of the route. The difficult thing with sandstone is that you can't climb for 24 hours after it rains because the rock gets really soft, you can break off holds, it will ruin the climb and is dangerous for the climber. It's really rational to be afraid of falling because you don't place the right kind of gear, you can potentially die. And so for me, it's reminding myself that I know what I'm doing and that I'm strong enough to do it and to commit. Falling! Oh. Oh. I took a whisper! <laughs> Fine. It's okay to fall, it's okay to fail. That's part of life and that's part of learning and ultimately that gives you more confidence. In order to climb a pitch cleanly, there cannot be any falls. So Lizzie restarts this pitch again. It's kind of like, well, I got out the worst that can happen. And then that gives you the confidence to like really push through these zones of fear because you know what happens if you don't succeed. Once you make that decision and then you commit to it, it's there's no better feeling in the world. You said off the way. I did it. Good job. <laughs> Thanks. Lizzie just successfully climbed the eighth pitch of the Moonlight Buttress, rated at 512. It's a positive step towards one day reaching her goal of climbing the whole route from the ground up. If you can see the small improvements you're making along the way, you will get there. It just like feels so cool to like access like a really good part of you. Like telling yourself like I know that I can do this, just to like, keep moving. And then before you know it, you're like, I think I was in flow. <laughs> like I was just in it and just flowing. The Moonlight Buttress is like such an inspiring climb and I plan on coming back to work on it until I can send the whole route. If you want success, you gotta be willing to try again, to endure the failure and keep going. I tried 900s for 10 years before I made one. So as I'm getting ready to go to Europe, I'm getting a call from Camp USA saying that Things have gone crazy in Italy, and things are about to be shut down in France, and that I should probably not go to Europe because I might not be able to fly home. Europe looks like the worst place to go in the world at this time. I'm deciding not to go because it's, uh, it's too unpredictable to go over there. I don't know anything about this disease. So I'm not taking any chances for my family, and I, I just can't take the chance. As the global pandemic hits the Western US, Lizzie received some bad news from the title sponsor of her opening weekend event. I got an email this morning from Black Diamond. Hey lady, so with all this corona stuff going on, we may be canceling our trip out to Smith. And if we make it awesome, and if not, you still have the packs and raffle items. Are you kidding me? I understand people not wanting to travel right now, like not wanting to fly, like there is a potential pandemic like sweeping across the world, so. Um, I get it. At the same time, this is affecting an event. Like, I've put a lot of promotion into Black Diamond being here. I have put a lot into like these athletes coming here. Yeah, I mean, this is it's for the biggest event I've ever tried planning, and I feel like there's so much out of my control with it right now. I work really hard, and I care about it so much, and I don't know what to do. I left Zion in a freaking storm to make sure that I was in a place where I could focus on my business. And so I decided to cancel the event um, because I can't imagine being a part of contributing to the spread of this virus. Um, 
but it's not like as simple as that when you're in my position because everything that I've done in the last like six months of my life and all the effort I put in has just washed away. Um, today I like had phone calls like learning that I'm not gonna receive like $2,300 back from a venue we rented and they're not going to provide any partial refund or a credit for a future trip. It's just a loss. And for many people, that's not a big deal for me. That's like my income for a month. It feels so complicated because my work is still requiring so much of me. So I don't have time to get another job. Plus there aren't a lot of jobs out there. I really just have no idea what I'm gonna do. I was living the good life, so to speak, in the late 80s, making a lot of money, owning two houses, living the dream. And all of a sudden, skateboarding fell off in popularity. And suddenly I found myself with two mortgages, a child on the way, no real backup plan. And I got busy hustling and did whatever I could. I think that I cherished those years the most because they taught me my resilience. And they taught me that I could figure out other ways to make a living. Coming up on Go Forth, the season finale. Jesse, Matias, and Lizzie all face the same challenge. It's really hard to know how this is gonna affect the investment plan. Right now, there's a lot of risk. And I could shake every single contract that I have that could prevent from um, getting new sponsors. And all their previous plans get tossed out the window. Quarantine life is fine, but I am doing very shitty. Are you prepared to close up shop or are you prepared to see it through and to ride out the storm?